All right, so um, here's your chicken. Um, note that when the chicken is standing, its head is here, right? Its legs down here. So this is anterior, this is posterior. Um, I am going to use this leg right here. Okay, um, note that the leg can kind of be pulled away from the body a little bit and you just see skin. Okay, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is just cut the skin nice and slow and steady to separate the leg away from the body. Okay, so now what we can see is a little bit of muscle, right? So this is the breast meat, the white or type uh, type one fibers, and we can start to see the dark meat here of the leg. Okay. Um, next, we want to separate the entire leg from the rest of the body, and so to do that, you should run your finger along the back of the bird. Okay. Note this is the thigh, this is the back. Here is the sacrum. Okay. Um, if you move the leg like this, you can feel the hip joint, right? So this is um, the greater trochanter and the head of the femur, and I can feel that it is moving as I move the leg, okay? And so I want to literally dislocate the hip, and to do so, I'm going to push on what I feel is the femur, and at the same time pull on the knee over here, okay? And so I just dislocated the hip. And so if I look in here, I can see the head of the femur, okay? And the greater trochanter, which we'll get into, um, as well as the series of muscles, okay? Um, now I want to um, essentially just cut the rest of the leg away. I will not have to cut through any bone because, again, I have just separated the femur from the rest of the hip. All right, so cutting through that joint. All right, it's nice and smooth. Here is where the hip was, and here is what I was actually feeling when I was uh, playing with the hip before. The head of the femur, that was the hip joint, right? a nice smooth attachment site for a series of muscles. Okay, um, So the first thing that you guys will probably want to figure out is left versus right. Of course, if you have a whole chicken, it's really no big deal because you can simply say, right, if the bird is facing forward, this must therefore be his left leg. Um, if you don't have the whole bird, you should look for the muscle side, right? So here's the muscle, here is the skin, right? So the skin, of course, has to be facing laterally. It's on the outside. You would never have exposed muscle like we see here. So if this is facing medially, we can figure out that this must therefore be on the left side, okay? Um, any questions so far as I put the bird away? Okay, um, next, um, a little bit of orientation here. This is the thigh, and what we would normally call the drumstick, this is the calf and the shin, um, which means that this is actually the ankle joint, and what we would call a chicken leg is actually just its foot, okay? So this is the knee joint. All right, the first thing that you should do um, is start to peel back the skin. Okay. As you do so, right, peeling it back, no need for a knife here, uh, you should see that there is this slimy connective tissue that is actually attaching the skin of the bird, right, the integumentary system, to the underlying muscle. This is called fascia. Right, so let me get this a little bit closer for you. This is called the fascia, right? Nice and slimy. It's really easy to tear through, okay? So uh, those are two things that you will need to identify, All right? In certain places, such as along the anterior thigh right here, 
And along the posterior thigh, it's going to be a little bit harder to pull the skin away. Um, and essentially, this is um, where we, or where the chicken has a lot of extra fat. Okay, so this here is loose adipose connective tissue. We can see that it's a different color from the muscle. Okay, adipose tissue right here. Okay. Um, and so we can cut through the fascia and the adipose being very careful not to cut any of the muscles, um, including your own, right? Watch your fingers, <laughs> okay? All right, so now as we peel back the skin, we're starting to be able to see that there are white lines through the muscle tissue itself. Also, if we look really closely, we can see that there are skinny little lines going in this direction and in that direction. These are the fascicles okay, of the muscle itself. Okay. I'll remove the skin the rest of the way here. So it's not in the way. Okay, so now a little bit of orientation again. This is the knee. Here's the thigh. Here's the shin and the calf. Okay, so the very um, the next thing that we're going to look at um, are those muscles that we were just talking about. Um, these muscles up here with a little bit of the fat tissue um, are inserting on the anterior side of the knee. And so when we pull on those muscles, if I can grab it right, uh, we can see that the leg is going to kick out, right? So kicking out, hopefully you can see that. I'm here, the other perspective as well. Therefore, these muscles on the anterior side are the quadriceps femoris muscles, okay? another term that you should be uh, able to identify, okay? Quadriceps femoris, they are the extensors of the leg at the knee. Now on the other side, we have these muscles right here. These muscles um, are inserting on the posterior side of the leg, or of the shin here. Um, and so, um, it's a little bit harder to pull on these ones, but, uh, <laughs> nope, not gonna work. Um, the hamstrings are on the posterior side, and therefore, they are the flexors of the knee. So, extensors and flexors, okay? Um, finally, again, this is the knee. So the anterior side of the knee. On the posterior side is the gastrocnemius. And so this would have ultimately connected to um, the foot, which is what we would call the leg of the chicken, to allow it to kick backwards and run away. Okay, um, any questions so far? It's a little wild here. All right, um, next, let's explore um, these joints a little bit, okay? If we look up here by the hip, we can see the nice smooth ball of the ball and socket joint of the hip. Um, and also, we can see um, a lot of like stringy stuff. And so what is that all about here? Um, show that view and I will show you guys as well. Um, there is a thin, light, um, almost white colored tube right here. Um, and in this bird, there's still even a little bit of blood. So this here is a blood vessel. Note that the blood vessel is dipping down in between this muscle and this muscle here, and ultimately delivering oxygenated blood to these muscles, okay? It is right next to the bone here, and again, light in color and a little bit of blood is still inside, okay? All right, um, let's see. Uh, next, um, you could explore these muscles just a little bit. Um, in theory, you can push your finger in between the natural divisions of the muscles, okay? So here, even without the knife, 
we can see that there are natural bundles of muscles. Remember that these are covered with epimysium. Okay, so they are their own independent muscles controlled by their own motor neurons. Okay. Um, as I am starting to push these muscles a little bit out of the way, I can start to see um, a series of other structures. Okay. First, if we look towards the end of the muscles, we see that it gets a little bit shiny. Okay. Um, try to show you here. So I have a muscle in my fingers, and at the end of this muscle, it gets white and shiny. We can also see that down here, right? So this shininess here is actually attaching the muscle to the underlying bone. And so we're going to call that a tendon, okay? So any tendon you can identify is good for me. Um, again, any questions you have for me? All right. Um, so, I just have a quick question. yeah, sure. So, would you repeat how to find like the tendon again? Sure. Um, I actually just found another one. Hooray! Um, so, um, you're looking with your finger um, to separate the different muscles apart. Right. And again, this should not take a knife, um, just because. Um, you know, there are natural delineations between these muscles. Um, if you look towards the end of a muscle, so for this one here, it just gets a little bit white and shiny towards the end. All right? Um, also, um, actually, that one's not as good as I would like. Uh, I will show you another one when I find another excellent example. Okay. Um, so soon enough. All right. But while I'm here, this deep into it, um, what I have done is pulled some of the muscle tissue away from the bone. So here is the bone, um, and deep down, nestled in between all of these muscles. I have more blood vessels, okay, so these are blood vessels here, and this really thick white structure right here is a nerve. Note how the blood vessels and the nerves are always going to be together, okay, so if you find a blood vessel, you should also be able to see a nerve. And I'll show that up here as well, so blood vessels and nerves here. Okay. Um, all right, so I think that's all of the, uh, the major structures uh, more superficially here. Um, at this point, we're going to try to explore the knee, right, the joint itself. Um, and so to do that, um, note that there is a little line, the popliteal fossa, in between the thigh and the calf. And so I'm going to take a knife, whatever knife you have or want, and I am going to cut down in this direction towards the front of the knee. All right, not too far, I don't wanna cut all the way through the joint, I just want to get some of the muscle out from around the joint. It's so a nice and gentle. Um, removing some of this extra muscle. And so, uh, what I have now is more exposed nerves and blood vessels, and I can just barely start to feel the joint, the bones themselves, okay? Also, while I'm here, I have found another tendon. This happens to be the tendon, one of the tendons of the gastrocnemius. It's a little slippery, as you might imagine. All right, so here, this white structure here, for you guys, it is the white structure. We can see that it is continuous with the muscle and it just gets white and shiny at the end as it connects to the bone. 
Okay, and again, blood vessels and nerves. Okay, um, so at this point I want to go even deeper to try to actually see this joint, so I'm going to cut away all of those things that I just showed you to expose the joint. And again, I'm just cutting along the natural lines in the muscles. Nice and gentle, don't want to nick the knife or the bone or me. None of those things are very good, All right? All right, um, the other thing is that I would like to find the patella, right? So it's part of the knee joint right here. Again, be very careful and start to remove the, uh, the hamstrings and the quadriceps femoris. All right, so um, if you're having trouble finding the joint itself, uh, my suggestion would be just to kind of move it and feel for the bones. All right, so right now I am feeling for the patella. I'm cutting away the front of the quote unquote drumstick. So, um, slowly getting down to the joint here, um, what we can see at this point a little bit um, is this little bump of bone. This here is the patella. Right? A little bit pathetic, more pathetic than we would think in a human body, but they don't really um, kneel to play in the garden or anything, right? They don't really need huge kneecaps. Okay. Cut some of this muscle away a little bit more. All right, and now we can see, um, especially if we bend the leg, this is part of the femur or the thigh bone, and this here is the patella. I'm going to get rid of the rest of this thigh muscle so that we can see the knee. Okay. Don't have to be terribly precise here. Okay, so now I want to actually look inside the knee so we can see the cruciate ligament and we can see um, the menisci. Okay, so again, feel for where the joint is. Um, there is a joint capsule around the joint. Right, so this white shininess here is part of the joint capsule. It helps to keep that nice lubricating fluid inside. Also, we can see one of these lateral ligaments. Okay. These lateral ligaments right here. This is one of those co- lateral ligaments on the outside of the knee joint. Okay, so I'm gonna do right here. And go up there. There you go. That is a collateral ligament. All right, now that we've appreciated that, I'm going to cut through it. All right, nice and gentle. I don't want to cut all the way through and completely separate the two bones just yet. All right, so now, again, we're looking at the side of the knee. This is the femur. This nice shiny piece of bone right here is the tibia. And in between them, we can see this little flap. All right, this flap is the meniscus. All right, so again, this flap is the meniscus and that is essentially going to um, absorb a lot of the shock of the chickens running around being crazy chickens. Okay, um, can't quite see the ACL just yet so I'm going to cut through a little bit more of this joint capsule 
It's a little bit fatty. A nice gentle movement so that we don't just cut through the entire thing. All right, so um, now we're starting to be able to see a lot more uh, of this connective tissue inside. All right, so um, again, the femur and the tibia. This little guy is the meniscus, and this little diagonal stripe of white inside is the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament. Femur, tibia, meniscus, ACL, or anterior cruciate ligament. I also, I have pulled out of the way this here, sliding all around, this is the patella. Right, so again, this is the patella, the kneecap, which I've pulled out of the way so we can see inside the joint. Okay. All right, uh, so now um, we have seen the joint, we have seen the skin and its fascia that is connected. We have identified a lot of the muscles um, the quadriceps femoris, the hamstrings. We have also looked at the gastrocnemius. We looked inside a synovial joint. This is a hinge joint, and the hip is a ball and socket joint. Okay. Now, <laughs> um, there's one more thing, um, and this is probably the least fun of the whole mess. Um, so this is the femur. I have just detached the femur. I want to get the last bit of muscle off of the femur because um, the goal here is to break the bone and take a look at the spongy bone versus compact bone versus bone marrow inside. Okay, and of course the femur is the longest, strongest bone of the body. It's a little bit difficult um, to break, so I'm going to try to make a little notch in it so it is easier to break. But of course it's very slimy and a little and it makes an awful noise. I apologize to one and all. Um, but breaking the femur, um, if you have kitchen shears uh, that might work as well. You could also try um, to break the tibia inside the drumstick instead. Just want you to see inside the bone, okay? So, inside the bone, we can see a shell of compact bone. A tiny little bit of like gritty um, spongy bone. And this red chunky stuff here, this is the red bone marrow. Okay, so that's really what I'd like you to see. Um, inside the bone, compact bone, kind of gritty, chunky, spongy bone lining the medullary cavity, and red bone marrow inside the medullary cavity. Um, now keep in mind that um, chickens at this point um, only grow for like seven to eight weeks, so this bird was still very much growing um, when it was processed, and so that's why the medullary cavity has red marrow instead of yellow bone marrow like an adult. Okay, um, so once again, um, I would like you to identify things like the skin, the integumentary system, the slimy fascia that connects it to the muscle, uh, loose adipose connective tissue, um, a series of muscles on the thigh as well as the gastrocnemius, um, tendons, right, which I'll show you again, there was a question about that. Um, so here, a white shiny tendon right at the surface. Here is a white shiny tendon right at the surface of the leg. Okay, uh, you should look inside the hinge joint, the knee joint, for the menisci. All right, so this right here is a meniscus, the ACL which I cut through. Break the bone and take a look at the bone marrow inside. Okay, are there any questions?